Introducing the new Cybex all-wheel drive controller. The all-wheel drive controller is a standalone unit dedicated for many platforms and many vehicles. One of the platforms which we have made the all-wheel drive controller for is the Lamborghini Huracan and Audi Gen 2 R8. The reason for that, we obviously do an engine management control kit for this car and obviously we've had lots of customers say they would like to have the ability to be able to do burnouts and actually be able to manipulate the amount of four-wheel drive that's being applied on the car. The reason for that, you don't always need a lot of four-wheel drive with these, even with the, this big car, this car behind me is 1500 horsepower and even when at the top end of like 250 km an hour you don't generally need a lot of all-wheel drive. Um, it, records, it causes extra drag on the car um, and when you're trying to get every ounce of the car in acceleration which these cars are generally used for being able to manipulate that in a closed loop manner now being able to monitor the front and rear slip between uh, front and rear axles and then calculating the slip between that and also a slip between both wheels on each axle is really important because it uses that and allows users to be able to adjust the amount of four-wheel drive um, duty cycle that's going into the motor to be able to not only keep the car safe, but also maintain the, the perfect optimization in longitudinal G and acceleration. Now, we're obviously, we're talking about just drag applications, but obviously we do have a lot of people that do stuff with the circuit cars. And this, all, again, is a really useful thing for that. The ability to be ha able to have multiple maps, so using the drive mode, for example, on this car, where you've got Corsa Strada uh, and Auto, you can use that to switch between different modes on your drive unit and you can do that live on the fly so when you're driving around you can adjust that and have a different um, maps that basically cater for that so that if you are on the circuit and you find you want to have a bit more um, rear bias or more front bias if you find the car is understeering um, and you need to be able to pull it out of the corner more then you can apply more four-wheel drive uh, coupling and the world is really limitless with this controller the other thing is we've also got a all-wheel drive potentiometer unit which allows you to connect to the all-wheel drive unit and a dedicated burnout switch if you wanted it. The potentiometer works live and it's been a real favourite with all the beta testers. You can adjust the amount of all-wheel drive live while just literally driving along um, to optimise it to suit. But ultimately, if, I mean, if you're a calibrator and you've got it understood of what exactly is needed from the car, then it's not needed as much because you can literally just dial it in on all of the maps that are available. There's over 80 maps that you can basically adjust on the unit and there's lots of limp mode protection strategies as well. We've got one for centre slip, so if there's lots of slip between the front and rear axle, we can basically watch that and, uh, and then bring a limp mode which will bring the forward drive light on the dash. And then also we've got the current monitoring in all of the pins of the uh, all wheel drive unit. So if excessive current is pulled, you can actually shut down the unit uh, and put it into a protection mode and bring a big warning on the dash. Um, that's really important if someone wants to short circuit, something like that, obviously it will detect it and, and stop any, one, any damage being done to the unit. And also um, warn the driver that they all of a sudden have lost all wheel drive control, which and especially in a car like this, which has got 1500 horsepower, and there's many that are more than that, it can be quite dangerous. So it was really important to not only offer full control of an all-wheel drive unit, but also do it in a manner that is safe for our customers. There are other ones for the all-wheel drive temperature. For example, this car has a pressure sensor and an all-wheel drive temperature sensor that's on the uh, all-wheel drive unit. We monitor the, the pressure and the all-wheel drive, allow users to monitor that live in SCAL, um, and also do traces to basically see the amount of uh, current being put through the motor, what optimizes best. And in the future, um, soon we'll be able to have USB data logging where you'll be able to put a USB stick into the, or a memory stick into the all drive unit. And then basically, will, as soon as it sees that, uh, it will start data logging and sticking all of the items out to the USB, which you then can view in our SVU software. Other things that's worth mentioning is that the, because the all drive controller is standalone, we do have a lot of people that say they've maybe got a two-wheel drive variant of the car, like you can get for the Lamborghini Huracan, and they wanted to go four-wheel drive. Being able now to have a standalone unit means that you can take the all-wheel drive unit that's from this car, maybe put it in other cars, or convert a two-wheel drive vehicle into a four-wheel drive. So it's really good for those applications as well. We also do a kit for the 911. Um, AIM have been really helpful, and Emory at ES Motor have been really um, part of the beta program. We've been testing it for a long time. Uh, some people might have seen the car doing burnouts um, at the GTR World Cup and, and saw how well that was working. Um, 
and obviously that now they can manipulate it. One thing that is really obvious about that car, that car has a really big tyre at the rear, really small tyres at the front. With a factory or wheel drive control unit, it's obviously looking as well at the slip between the front and rear axle. So when you've got a massive difference now because you've got a huge difference in the tyre uh, diameter, um, the all-wheel drive unit won't be working as efficiently. So we put the ability to have tyre scalers, um, and adjust it so that the unit can make sure that the center slip is always calculated correctly between that. Um, the all drive unit, I mean, it's been tested now. Uh, the guys at IRS have been testing it on the RS3 now for well over a year, and I'm sure many people have seen the, the serious results that people have had from using that unit on that car. It's transformed it uh, in terms of acceleration. So let's take a look at some of the products and what they actually look like. In front of you now is the Lamborghini Huracan. Um, Audi R8 and 901 and 901.2 all-wheel drive unit. The, those two units share a similar uh, characteristics in the shape of the uh, original all-wheel drive unit. The internal programming is different, uh, but uh, they fundamentally look the same, so it's really important to be able to show you that. Then what we've got here is the, um, the, the standard generic unit. Um, this unit is also seen by probably many people that have got the RS3 kit. Um, the RS3 was it's quite difficult to make into like a, a dedicated um, replacement unit. It has to have a patch on it, but we are working on making a dedicated unit for that. It just takes a little bit more time, and we know how important we wanted to get that out to the customers because obviously that has been a huge market for us. And IRS Motorsport have done a really good job in getting that set up, etc. Um, so you can see here on the front that you've got a USB, and that USB port is available for all of the other units. Um, and what that does is allows users to be able to connect to the unit. Our engine control units are generally connect to via an Ethernet. Uh, these are all based on USB. So literally plug in the USB, you connect it to your laptop, and then SCAL, you need the latest version of SCAL, and then you can connect to the unit uh, and change calibrations, etc., on the units. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning, um, some people have looked at controlling all the drive units uh, from their engine control unit. Um, they might have that working well in certain applications, but for some of the cars, like the RS3, the Haldex units especially, which have a motor, they can pull a huge amount of current. Um, the RS3 unit, we, we, some, some of them are pulling up to nearly 28, 30 amps. And, uh, and the pins that are available on here are literally just won't be able to handle that. So what we've done with the all-wheel drive unit is allowed you to have ganged outputs. What that means is that you can dedicate, this unit has four outputs, and you can dedicate the units to all be driven together in, in synchronous. Um, that way it shares the current across the pins and maintains the, the, uh, the 15 amp current limit that we saw with the uh, Super Seal 1.0 uh, test. We did lots of thermal testing by putting a continuous amount of current through it and then monitoring the temperature on it. 15 amps just really was the limit. I uh, wouldn't go on any more than that. So that's why we had to obviously have the ability to, to join them up and allow them it to be done properly in a safe manner and, uh, and allow users to put even more current. I mean, the factory RS3, I think, is only running in the region of about 50% duty. I mean, some of the cars um, the RS have got are up in the 90s, which is why it's so high uh, on the current. But the, the performance aspects of that, um, that you gain in acceleration, is huge. <laughs>